right, we just had some more folks join in. So I'll just wait a minute longer here. Hi, everybody. Hello. Yes, you'll join us in just a second. I'm Norma and we're, com we're coming in from Saskatchewan. So it's our dinner time. I might zip out for a minute to turn the meat. All right, great. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure, truly. Not bad. Good job. Jill, we'll just wait one more minute here and I'll introduce you and we'll turn it over and get started. All right, I think we are, um, I think we're pretty much ready to go. Are you ready uh, over there, Jill and Kim? We're good. Yep, yep, we're good. Okay. Well, Anim Bojo, everybody. My name is Sean Conway. I'm here with the Mississauga Nation. I'm a coordinator liaison for Curb Lake First Nation. Uh, and uh, looking looking forward to, to a good night. Oh, we still got folks joining us. So it's good. I'll take my time with the introduction. Um, uh, we really like doing these workshops and these cultural learning series events. And, and uh, thanks for following us on, on social media and, and our work in the community. So, you know, feel free to share that information with, with everyone, everyone you know, uh, because the more that we know what you're interested in doing, the more we can, we can put on. Um, so we're looking forward to the next couple of months and uh, um, any and all feedback is always welcome for the, for the work that we do. Um, with that, I'll uh, welcome you all to our workshop series. We've got, we've got wonderful Jill and helper Kim, uh, for, for this workshop. Um, so thanks again for joining us, everyone. I'll turn it over to, to Jill. Miigwech. Hi, everyone. Uh, miigwech. I would like to thank, um, Kim for asking me to bead. Um, I've been beading, um, since I was about 18, pretty much self-taught. Um, the two needle beading is something that I just learned a few years ago, and I learned by watching a YouTube tutorial. So, um, what's that? Did you unmute yourself? Am I, I, you can hear me, right? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Kim's like, did you unmute yourself? Um, so I haven't been beading in probably three or four months. I've been busy moving or, or packing and building our house. So this is a, the like a first night for me in months. Um, so bear with me because I'm a little bit rusty. Um, but we're going to start with uh, threading the needle. I think that might be the hardest part for many of us. Um, I don't know how, how well we can see, but I always find it easiest to take the um, needle to the thread to go in that way rather than bring the thread to the needle. Mm -hmm. And it should, it should work, um, but we'll take some time getting our needles threaded. Um, Kim has uh, pre-waxed our thread. We like to use some beeswax to treat the, the thread when we're beating. It just helps um, prevent some tangling and uh, helps the beads go through better. So I never double thread the, the knot once we get it threaded. I always leave the one end loose and then tie a knot at the longer, longer end. And I always just, it's very hard <laughs> with the camera. I'm facing away from the camera when I do my work, but I always just tie, tie it over my finger, roll it, and then you get a nice little knot. So 
I'll give everyone a few seconds to thread their two needles. If you have any, if you're going too fast or whatever, just let me know and then we'll slow down. So I'm working on a slightly larger P, um, center than, than what you guys are. I ran out, but it's probably better than you can see. But the first thing we have to do is take um, our center for the earrings that we're going to make and attach to the pellet. The pellet we can use uh, felt or stick felt or um, what else can you need on? Like foam, yeah. um, canvas. There's all kinds of things that you can need on. Do you have like a lid of a plastic, just a clear plastic lid, just that I can pour these without rolling? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Jill, it's Amy from Hiawatha. Hi, Amy. Um, are we doubling our thread? Like when we no, when you knot it, when you knot it, don't thread it. Leave one end. Or do you want to But do we double it? Like, do we want it twice as thick? No. Okay. No. And how much do we just cut as much as we think we need, or Wait, did you pre-cut them? No. Oh, it's just like I would do an arm's length and a half if you can. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I Kim put together. The Thank part, you. So I'm not sure, but I, I usually have like an arm and a half to work with per needle. So it's cutting me. Oh, you're me, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we need to move this off? Move this off. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, is everyone, if you're not ready, let me know. All right, so we will, um, there should be a, a small hole in, in um, both uh, opposite ends of the gym. gym. Thank you. I'm tired and I lose my words. I know, me too. <laughs> and so um, we'll just come up beside the gem, hold the gem with one hand in the center of your pellet, and then come up beside it and then go down through the hole to attach it. And we'll just do that a couple times just to make sure that the gem is secure. And right now we're just using one thread. The other one um, I have tucked away on my shirt, um, but you can put it wherever out of your way. Um, so that it's, you, you have it for later. So I, I think it's about three or four per side for, for attaching the gem. And then when we go where I'm ready for the other side, I don't cut it and knot it. I just run my thread um, over to the other side of the gem. And it doesn't matter, nobody will see it. It'll all be hidden when we're done. And you might get a couple knots, just go slow. Don't get frustrated. Yeah, I always find that if I'm in a really bad mood or I'm really tired, that's when the thread. Um, and it's always to, uh, Hello. Hello, Jill. Hello. It's Norma and Jesse here in Saskatchewan. There's a, a, quite a bit of background noise, so it's a little difficult oh. to hear you. I'm not sure if that's something that's contained or not, but I thought I'd let you know. It's, um, it might be my husband on the TV. I can ask him to. I bet it is. Okay, don't, don't yeah. make an angry husband. All is good. <laughs> no, um, I warned him. <laughs> <laughs> They're, a big Love. They're getting a lot of feedback. Okay. All right. Oh, you on there. Okay. Okay. 
to go home and join us that way. Okay. Uh, see you there. Perfect. Later. So Kim's just getting a she'll catch up with us real quick. Letting uh, the gem, the first gem for your first earring should be on. We'll put the better one on to share the child. I'm just going to grab a drink while well, everyone's so I'll be right back. So when you're ready, you don't have to do this. Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. All right, and we're back. Sorry about that. Is if you're not here, let me know. Joanna, you still turning your needle? Can't see everybody. Mm -hmm. Not there, okay. Rory, it's nice to see you on here. You're going to be um, using your beating skills on your mittens. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Maybe we can have one with Jimmy. Yeah, Jill, um, everyone else is muted. There's still just quite a bit of background noise that's coming through. Okay. Love, there's just a bunch of background noise. I don't know if it's where I'm seated or if it's the TV. Is there still background noise? He just muted the TV. It might be the echo of my house. It's better. Okay, it's better. So it is a TV. Sorry, Bing. <laughs> At least it's not a lease game. She owes me uh, $50. <laughs> Hi, Jill. It's Kelly. Hi, Kelly. How many times do you go through the centerpiece? Probably like two, three or four on each end. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it should be secure enough after that. Okay. How's everyone doing?
done. So I don't know how many of you have um, beading experience. I learned how to bead, um, like I said, I was self-taught. I started beading, uh, what I learned was lazy stitch and I didn't like how that looked. So I um, kind of made up my own way of doing beading. Uh, it, it involved one needle, one needle, uh, four beads at a time, tacking down through two and uh, it, it was all right, it looked all right, but uh, I found it wasn't flat and, and the sign of really good beadwork is to get it nice and flat. And um, so I uh, was happy when I found a few years ago, um, the instructions on um, how to do the two needle because it's made a world of difference. I don't know if you can see this, um, but it's a um, wrist, uh, cuff is a cuff I'm making for my brother-in-law and you can see um, the the lines through the black are lazy stitch and it's not flat at all but um, through the I did two needle beading on the bear paw and it's um, super flat there's a huge difference between the two techniques so I, I like lazy stitch it fills in a lot of area really fast but I like two needle beading because it just looks so smooth and so flat. So that's um, a sample of the difference of different techniques. And um, everything that I'm teaching you tonight for two needle, you can apply to bigger um, projects such as a pair of cuffs or um, whatever power regalia or um, anything, the bread, whatever that you would want to make. So that's just a little um, sample of what we're reading everybody and uh, I think I'll give everyone about a minute more and then we'll get get started on on the next part just gonna catch up on the chat beautiful thank you Casey Are we good? Okay. I realized that I was going to teach you how to do two needle beading with white beads on a white background and that probably wouldn't show up very well. So um, the, the next color for you is like the soft pink, I believe it, it's kind of whitish. Um, you, it should be the one that you have the most of in your kit, but I'm going to do a different color just so that it shows up. So um, and honestly, if you want to do different colors, go ahead. Um, I had thought that we would make earrings um, similar to a set that I had made a while ago. I don't know if you can see very well in my phone, but that's kind of what I was thinking. We'd make something similar to that. But if you want to mix up the colors, do your own design, there's really no right or wrong way. I'm not going to fault you on it. So. Um, the next step is oh, to get your thread up about half a bead width away from the gemstone. And it, you just eyeball it. Um, you don't want to be too far away because um, then it won't look nice and tight, but you don't want to be too close that it's going to bulge. So about half a bead width. And you'll get better at judging this as you go on. So again, we're still just using the first thread. We haven't tied any knots off or, or done anything. Um, we're just using the one thread and we're going to pick up with, um, with our needle a whole bunch of beads. Um, you want enough that it's manageable. It's about 10, maybe 12 um, will fit on a needle at a time. So let's just going to get our needle full of beads. And then we take them down to the base. And, and I'm left-handed, so I always go this way around. But you, if, if you, it's more comfortable for you to go the other way, you can go either way, whatever is comfortable for you 
around the gemstone. And you won't need as many beads as I do because your gem's much smaller than mine. I don't even know if you'll need 10, actually. I'm not sure. But just put on, just put on a few for now, maybe a bead's length for now. And this is where the second needle comes in. So we take the first needle and we put it aside. And I always um, clip it on my shirt just so it's out of the way and nice and secure. And then we take the second needle. And again, I've already threaded it. I'm sitting on it. Threaded it and I've knotted it, but it's just, um, it's not double knotted. It's just the, the loose thread. Jill, can I ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, so I've got my I've got my twelve beads on, and I've got yep. them around the edge of the gem. Yep. And so when um, am I going to bring my needle back through the pellon? And no, um, put that needle aside, the one that you you have your the thread that you have your your beads on with. So do I, just, do I just do I bring it back through though? First of all, no, you don't. You just leave it loose like this. Just Lord. leave it loose. Okay. Great, thank you. Yep. So then we pick up our, our second needle. This is a separate one. It's not tied off or it's not connected to our, our pellet at all yet. And we take it and I always come in, I just have to look at it for a second. I always come in between the very first bead at the end of our, like the start of our thread and the second. So just come up from the back between those two beads. And then we pull it all the way through. So our knot is tight. I don't know how well you can see. So our knot is tight at the back and holding it steady and tight. Make sure the beads are tight and close to the gem. And it should be over Lapping, the thread should be overlapping the beads and you bring your needle down right close on the other side. And then we do that repeatedly, so we're still holding this needle away from us, this thread away from us, and we do that with this needle, the second needle, all the way around, um, skipping, you can do every bead, you can do between every bead, but I find that really slow, so I just go every other, between every other bead. It's very different pointing it at the camera rather than at me, so. I'm getting a couple knots. But then, so again, I'm at uh, between the third and fourth bead right now. And then I put my needle down at the back. That didn't sound good, whatever that was. Is everyone okay? So we'll just keep continuing doing that until we get all the way around. Um, and when you get to the end, don't do anything. Um, I'll show you what to do next. So just bear with me. I'm going to quickly tack all of these beads down. As I said, I don't know how many beads you'll need for your size gem. Uh, you might need more than 12. You might need less. Um, the beads aren't always the same size. So one person might need 15, one person might need 16. I'm not really sure. So we'll just keep going. I should have waxed my thread better. And then your beads should be nice and tight. Um, there should be no gaping. Um, 
and close to the gem. And sometimes if I can't see where I'm at, I'll just I'll just pull it up a little bit and see where the last loop was. And then I can I know where where to come down on the next side. <laughs> So I need, I need some more beads. So I put that needle aside and I'm going back to my first needle and picking up more beads. I'm dropping them all over the table because I'm in a hurry and it's making a mess. I haven't taught over Zoom before, and I always, um, usually when I do teach a beading class, I um, tend to need to help people with things like knotted threads or um, whatever. And I feel bad that I can't do that for everyone tonight, but it looks like I'm the one needing the help because I keep getting knots. Does anyone have any questions while you're waiting for me to get my knot out? I might have missed when you said it, but do you tack down after every bead? Every, you can do every, this is Kelly, right? Yes. Hi Kelly. You can do every bead, but it, it gets um, quite, it takes quite a bit of time. So you can do every other. Okay. Sometimes I'll do every bead if I'm going around a really sharp corner or want to make it a really defined look just to make sure the beads go exactly where I want them. But going around um, like a gentle curve like this is, is okay to do every bead, every other. Vic, can you turn that down a bit or go to your room? Yeah. Thank you.
So I'm about three quarters of the way done. I'm not sure how everyone else is doing. I hope you're not waiting on me. If it ends up that you're like one one time you get every third bead and the next time you get every other and then one time you get every one, it doesn't really matter. It's just a, it's just really to help tack down and make sure that the beads lay nice and flat. Do try though for some consistency with every other. So at this point, I'm at the end and I want my last bead to line up with my first bead. And I don't want it to bunch and I don't want it to gape. So I want to pick out the right size or width of beads that will allow me to have a nice flat, even um, surface that um, looks seamless, like you can't tell where I started and where I finished. So um, you might need to pick out um, the right width of bead. You might need to take off a bead. You might need to add a bead. Um, it'll really depend on how yours is turning out. And at this point, I want to tuck my, I haven't tacked them down yet, but what I want to do is take the thread from the bead where I have the thread with the beads on them. I want to take it and take my needle through the very first bead, like so. I don't know how well you can see. Pull it through. So you actually went through the bead, Jill? Yeah, the very first bead. Sorry, it's not, it's very hard, as I said, to do it facing away from me. Anyway, so it'll look like that. So you can't, um, you shouldn't be able to tell where you started and where you finished. And then you just take that needle with the thread coming out and you take it to the back. Like so. And then it should be a seamless circle. And I have to finish tacking this last little bit down. So I'm going to do that. So again, this is the needle, the thread um, that had the be beads on it. I'm going to take that, tuck it away. And then my thread that I was tacking, I'm going to continue doing that with my, my second needle. My thread is very uncooperative with me tonight. I don't know if I didn't wax it enough. I think my spool is about, um, 20 years old, so it might just be really old thread. When you're beading, um, I always suggest getting really good quality uh, beading thread. Some people use, I know a woman who used to use um, dental floss. She liked it because it was pre-waxed. I always, I tried it and I found it really hard to 
uh, thread because of all the different strands in it. Um, there's some other ones. There's one um, that's a bit thicker and you don't have to wax. I think it's called Fireline or Fox. I don't, I don't remember what it's called. But. Fireline, Jill. It's, Fire it's, actually, it's actually fishing line. Yeah, and it's um, quite that's expensive. Fine. I bathe with it all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I find it a bit expensive, the one I'm thinking of. So I don't use it very often, but I do like it. It's a good sturdy thread. Um, it's definitely pricey, but it, it, yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Kelly. My memory is good, but it's short. I'm almost done packing. And then um, we'll get started as soon as possible on the second row. And this is the row we're going to have some fun with the colors. And one of the best things about two needle beading is that we can play with the colors, with the um, where the beads lay, um, how they look without um, committing to it. We can, we can play with it, see if we like it. Um, and if we don't, we can take it up and uh, we're not committed to it just yet without, um, before tacking it down. So I'm ready to go. I don't know if everyone else is. I can wait a few minutes. You're shaking your head, Aunt Linda. So we'll just wait. Hi, Kim, I'm glad you're back. Hi guys, uh, yeah, I'm icing my foot, so. With peas, it's the only thing peas are good for. And no, I'm not beating. Oh. <laughs> Working on my mitt. Uh, you and Rory should get together. He's making mitts. Who? Rory. Oh, is he? Yeah. He makes some really nice stuff. Maybe we can convince Rory to run his own yeah. workshop in a couple months. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was just thinking. Earmuffs or some hats or something. Rory, you've been holding out on me. <laughs> hey, I just started doing mitts. First time I've used a sewing machine this year. Oh, I do it all by hand. I do some by hand, but I bought a, I got a fur sewing machine. Nice. At times. We'll have to talk. <laughs> Anytime. Am I holding it close enough? I can't see my camera that well. Just if anyone needs me to hold it differently or show you a certain part or whatever, just speak up, let me know.
Is everyone ready? I'm just finishing up my last row. Okay. Does anybody know how to flat bead? You know what I mean? Kelly? No, this is my first beading experience. What's your name? Yeah. Kelly Lackey, are you still here? I am still here. I, I'm just at work, <laughs> doing work oh, too. That <laughs> flat beading. Do you have anything there? What do you mean by flat beading, Kim? Uh, um, remember we like talked on. about it. Called. I keep calling it flat beading, but that's not what I want to say. I know how to flat bead, and I find this one easier. Do you? It lays nicer. So there is a big difference. I think so, yeah. Okay. You understood what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> like kind of like this, but bigger? Is that what you mean, Kim? I can't see yours. So one needle? I yeah. Where are you? Are, are you Why showing something? I can't see anybody's. I can't see anybody's camera. I don't know how this works. I see you. Um, I know. And I've tried this before. Sean and I have tried this before. And I don't know why I can only I can see Jill and that's it. I can't see anybody else's. You must have it on speaker view. If I hit. It, if you put it on gallery view, then you can see everybody. Where do I find that? On my laptop, it's up in the right hand corner. If, when you put your mouse up there. have to come to my house and look at it. Oh, wait. Yeah, I don't have that. I need Jill, it's Casey here. Um, I think it looks like we're about ready to move on to the next step. All right, perfect. So um, everyone's two threads should be at the back, at the back of your um, pellet. I always switch up um, which needle I'm working with between each row, just so that the lengths of the thread kind of even out near the end. But if you don't, if you can't keep track of it or you don't do that, it's not a big deal. Um, one thread, the thread that we tack with will become quite a bit shorter, um, but that's okay, we can, we can carry on. Um, and then if we need to, we can always cut more thread. The next row, we again start about half, um, half a bead width away. What are you looking for? Well, my husband just came by, stuck his nose in my beading supplies and then left. Um, so half and half a bead away. We were going to start the rainbow colors in. So if you want to do the rainbow colors, uh, go ahead and do that. I think I counted out um, two, two of each color to go around. I don't know if that's too long to go all the way around the gem. Um, if you just want to do one of each color, if you want to mix up the colors, um, you can do whatever your heart content is on this row. Um, this is the one that we're going, I was going to um, suggest we just play with and have some fun. I'll, um, 
I think I'm going to do some rainbow. So um, I was two, I'm going to do two red, two orange, two yellow, two green. I think, I can't remember, I think you have two shades of blue. Um, I thought the one was a bit pale. I'm not using the same colors as you as I don't have those beads with me. Um, but I'm going to use the colors that I do have. So here is my row. And I'm going to take it down to the end and see how it looks. And, and I'm okay with it. I, I, I like it. I think it looks good. So what I'm going to do is tack down those colors. And then when I get to the end of that, and it, it shouldn't take you as many, your gems smaller. So you, you wouldn't have as much space to fill. But in the middle, I'm going to just use some white until I get opposite end of the red to the opposite end. And then I'm going to repeat the rainbow colors. So um, you guys can do whatever you want, whatever colors you want or no color. It, you could do um, a pattern, what, however you want to do it. But that, that's how I'm doing it right now. So again, I take this needle and I put it aside. One that had the thread, the beads on it, that one's tacked away, tucked away. And then I have the other thread that's still back here. And I'm going to bring it up and go, and this will be easier to see where to come up because I'm just doing two beads of each color. So I'll come up and tack down between each, each color. So I'll let you guys play around with it, do whatever pattern or color scheme you want to do. There's some options there for you. You could do one red, one of the light pink, one orange, one of the light pink, um, really however you want to do it. And again, we tack down every, every other one. What's up, Vic? Do we have ice cream? Yeah, I'm to pack something Do you know where it is? <laughs> have a look. So I'm, I'm done to my purple and I'm going to pick up some white. I don't know, Vic. I think they're at the very bottom. So um, as you can see, the what I don't know if you can see actually, but the whites come about to um, midway around the gemstone, which is where I want them um, to fall before I start repeating the um, color pattern. Sometimes the having the thread in between every other bead will um, move it a bit further out of the way. So I'll assess it how far these couple end beads are um, when I get 
to the end with the attacking. I have a very loud 12 year old in the kitchen looking for a snack. All right. Hey, no food in the, your bedroom. I don't care. I just keep going around. And I think I'm going to take this last bead off. It's not tacked down, so I can just pull it off. Uh, the thread away from the needle and just there it's gone out of the way and then when I get to the end of these beads of the white beads here I'm going to pick up more more of the rainbow colors again So tuck that needle out of the way, get my needle for the beads and get two of each color again. I like these little containers, like you can buy them at the dollar store. Um, they hold about a hank, um, depending on the size of the hank, but about a hank of um, beads and they're really easy to use. I like how you can stack them and they're portable and you can see. I don't like that they sell some that are colored or have colored lids and I don't like those ones as much. I try to get the, the clear And they come in different sizes too. You can get some bigger ones for when you buy a big bag of beads from Kim in her little shop. So here I am ready to start the second half. Trying to keep the thread separated. And yep, sometimes the thread gets caught. It really, I think, takes a little bit of time to um, learn how to eyeball where your needle needs to come up, where it needs to go down, how uh, close or how tight the, the beads are. Um, it, it comes with practice. My very early beading is not, um, I'm embarrassed by it now, actually, <laughs> but it is my early, early beating and, you know, it's how I learned, right? It takes years, years of practice. I've been beating since I was 18, so um, 10 years. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, probably about 20 years now, and uh, I still feel like I don't know very much about it. There's still so many techniques that I don't know. And some techniques that I have learned and I simply do not like to do, and I, uh, I don't use them. 
like uh, peyote stitch. I have not come to terms with peyote. Jill, I'm making Christmas balls out of peyote stitch. Yeah, you're like the peyote expert, Kelly. I uh, I can't stand doing it. For me, it's the getting started with peyote. Once I get into it, I'm, I'm okay, but um, it's getting started. My thread is twisting, so I'm just um, trying to get it untwisted. And every once in a while, I just hold it up, let it uh, untwist itself. And then just keep going. that one out of the way. So again, I'm at the point where I'm ready for the white beads to come um, around to connect to the red. So I'll just pick up a few beads, see where I'm at. If I need to add any, take any away. That looks about good. Start tacking those ones down. There should be very little gaping. It shouldn't be bulging. Should be should be flat. Um, but again, if it's your first time beating and it's not it's not completely flat, don't worry about it. It will come in time. So. Practice, practice, practice. I like two needle beading because it can go um, nice and fast. I'm getting knots. I think it's because I'm in a hurry. Uh, does anyone have any questions or? No, okay. There we go. I, I generally feed in the evenings. Um, I like, I find it therapeutic. It's my time to unwind and relax. I, uh, my personal choice is to not uh, take a lot of orders for beadwork. Um, I get a lot of requests for it, but I like to have um, some freedom, some artistic freedom to just make what I want when I feel like it. So um, if I do take orders, I'm generally really slow with them. Um, I do have a lot of other things going on in my life that don't always allow me the time to beat as much as I want. So, um, but it, it is my, my uh, de-stressor. And I'm always happy to share with others. Um, the techniques that I know, I know it was hard for me when I was starting out, not um, really having a teacher or not really knowing um, some best practices, what might work and what wouldn't. So it's nice to um, share that and talk about it with other people and get some tips and tricks and So again, I'm at the very end. I have this one, um, one white bead just loose here. The rest are tacked down. So I've taken the tacking needle and thread and I've put it aside and I'm going to take 
the needle and thread um, that I've used for to pick up my beads. And I'm going to take that needle through the very first red one that I put on. Very carefully. And then put it down to the back. So again, it should be a seamless circle. You should really be able to see where you started or where you ended. My, my circle's a little wonky. I have some really, really tiny blue beads and some really big green beads. So it's kind of throwing off the, the circle. Um, that sometimes happens if your beads aren't the same size. Um, we'll just make it all blend together with the next row. Hopefully it'll uh, even itself out. We'll just wait a few minutes while everyone gets to the same, same spot of completeness of your second row. Um, Sean, Sean, are you with us? Or Kim, I guess, or Casey, I guess. I was just wondering how long we're going tonight. Um, if we should do another row or if I should um, show the banding. Um, is there the a workshop goes to 8.30 tonight. Okay. We've got lots of time. Getting a lot of feedback whenever you turn your microphone on, Casey. I'm just untwisting my um, threads. They seem to be really twisty tonight. Gonna check the chat. I just moved and I don't know where all of my supplies are. So I have to try to figure out where I put, I packed my beads. It was hard to do, but I packed most of my beads away back in June, maybe. And that box is 
buried somewhere in my basement. So luckily I have these few ones out to uh, to do tonight's class. Just going through my banding to see what I want to uh, put on my edge. Just doing that while everyone catches up with, uh, with where we're at. Getting your second row done. Hi, Dale. Hi. How many rows of beads do we put on? We're just doing three tonight before we start the banding. So the last row will repeat the same plain color as the inside. As the inside. That's what I'm doing. Um, again, you guys can do whatever whatever you want, but I was just going to do three, three rows. Um, I'll show that picture of what we were going to duplicate again. Um, I don't know if you can see those. I can't see my screen. There we go. Can you see that okay? We're gonna do something similar to those. Oh, okay, yeah, I see it. Yeah. I think those are Kim's. I think she has. Well, maybe one of the original. I think I've had to make you two sets or three sets of those, Kim, something. <laughs> she keeps losing one. I keep losing just one. Yeah. And then, of course, I never have the right colors or the right gemstone or the right uh, banding to match the one that she has still has. So I've, I've made her a few pairs of them. Yep. And we should... Uh, I'm just going to carry on, but we should, when you're done your second row, um, all of your beads um, should be, or your threads, both your threads should be at the back. And again, you want to bring one of your needles, it doesn't matter which one, up um, about half a, a half a bead width away from where you started. From your second row. So we'll be going on and I'm just carrying on with uh, plain green. Big? Victoria, or is that big? I need you in your room if you're going to have volume up, please. Thank you. So again, I'm going to have my my beading, my beading needle, or the one with the beads on it, and tuck it away. Um, hold the green beads, yours won't be green, but hold the beads away nice and tight, nice and close to my second row. Um, and then have my other thread with my needle and come up and start tacking those down. And try not to get tangled with my other supplies. husband's texting me from the living room he doesn't want to be on 
on uh, camera or on the video. I'd say he's shy, but those that know him know he's not. If anyone has any questions, or if I'm going too fast, or you just have a general question about beating, just uh, let me know. Sometimes my um, fingers get quite raw from holding the thread out of the way and hold it really tight. I can feel them. it's starting to ache a little bit right now.
Did we lose you, Jill? Her camera seems to be frozen. Yeah, I think we I keep getting booted. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Uh, we've lost Jill. Um, huh. Kim, do you, Linda. Have her, you have her number? Yeah. Can you give her a quick call for me? Yeah. Meg. Yeah, she lost internet. She's coming back. I don't know what it is, whether it's Hiawatha or... We lost some participants too, eh? Hello? Yeah. Hi, Kim. Okay. Hi. Okay. I thought we lost me again. No, you're still on. Yeah. It, it Kent's Bay is brutal. I have to reboot my router about 12 times a day. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. We lose internet every morning at quarter after nine. Yeah. Every we're, morning. We're usually about 2.30 and then again about 5.30. You're still on mute. Mm -hmm. How's everybody doing? Good? Yep. Jill will be back. She's just rebooting her router and, and she course, she's not, on Kent's Bay. She may not uh, get back on. We can cross our fingers. It's normally Casey that has problems. By the time we get Jill back, everyone's going to have giant earrings ready to go. So Jill's on her way down to our house down here. She will be about five or six minutes. Okay, great. She's not getting internet back, which I wondered whether she would. So she'll just be a few minutes. I'll move. Never, we've never had a mid workshop venue change. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Hiawatha. <laughs> we go on the fly. Good job, we're all related. 
just think like it, like share. It's costume change. Costume change. Yeah. Really, I started at the office and now I'm at home, so. <laughs> Boy, you move. <laughs> I saw the truck there and I wondered if you just walked home. Hey, Kim. What? Uh, what's with the black t-shirt that Jill has on? Mississauga Nation, you want one? I know. I know what it is. Did she get that to teach the class? No. She got it because I think she's cute. Oh, you're... Stop um, now, Kim. Stop excuse now. Me? No more snuggles. Kim. Yes. You know how you have one sore foot? <laughs> yes. You're going to have two tomorrow. I will get you one. <laughs> okay. I should have given you one anyhow for doing the workshop. I know. How about a onesie? We don't have any of those. We'll have to look into those. I know one little girl that would wear it. If you do, I'm sure grandma could make it into it. <laughs> what, Rebecca? If they do, make sure it has a nice black door for me. <laughs> I'm sure grandma could make a t-shirt into a, a onesie. <laughs> I'm sure grandma She's a pretty been... good seamstress. She's passable. She's no hell of a beater though. Well, I'm learning. Leave me alone. I don't have patience for beating. I'd rather do sequins. <laughs> me too. No way, man. I'd rather do quilling. Well, yeah, toss it. Depends if she keeps the quill box that you make or she makes. <laughs> oh. Kim, you're getting really beat what up. What did she say? <laughs> Nothing. She didn't. Don't make me come there. <laughs> we don't have any more room at the table. <laughs> I have to put back on my boot. I'll just go to Kelly's and hang out in her kitchen. Okay. Oh, I love her kitchen now. Me too. Kelly, Aunt just Linda, want, I want your island. It's lovely. Aunt Linda? Yes. Look at this. You're nuts. That's beautiful. Oh, That's my gorgeous. God. That is awesome. Cal? Yes? The beach should be here tomorrow. Okay, awesome. Yeah. I got a message saying... You have boxes coming from John B. So sweet. That was quick. <laughs> That's gonna be one of the seniors projects. <laughs> no. Um some of them struggled with the corn. So okay. I know they won't get that. <laughs> I don't have mine done, but I'm not struggling with it. Um, I've just been too busy. Maybe next Christmas, because just because the decreasing in the tubular peyote. Yeah. I'm getting better at it. It, it just takes a lot of practice. Sure and we might be able to sit with each other to help each other. Yes. Right. And that's what I'm saying. By Maybe next fall we'll be able to do it. Maybe. This Did is you get one. any gear? <laughs> nice. This is this is version two. <laughs> um, I seen two deer, but I didn't get either one of them. Oh. So no I, deer toes. I might be able to get you some. I don't know what Robin did with his. Robin got one. Oh, did he? Brad got one. You want you want the hooves, Kim? Yeah, the toes. Yeah. I call them the toes. Okay. Um, Casey's mother, which is an amazing lady, is going to be showing us how to make leather um, Christmas decorations in one of the workshops. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited for that one. I kept mentioning it today. So did you ask your mom? Come on. When's it coming out, Kim? I don't know. I don't know. Case, do we know? 
Um, I'm going to look at our timeline and see when registration is coming up, but it, um, it could open up next week or the week after, but it'll be opening up soon anyway. Keep your eyes out, guys. John's going to show us how to catch bullfrogs. You know, how to catch Lego. Lego? That's what I heard. Yeah. Sean heard. has twin girls. Hi. <laughs> we learned what it was like to step on Lego today or yesterday. Um, have a seat there. Okay. I'll just sit. Hi, Jillian. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about that. <laughs> now we got to get that focused on. My internet has been really spotty since we moved. Nope, it's just but Iowa. It was it was never bad on soapers. Never. Well, gee, maybe you have to move back. No. And maybe I'd have a neighbor. <laughs> so Kate teaches grade six every yeah. day and has to do it from Uncle Mike's bedroom because we can't do it at, at our house. Oh. I just told Bing, well, we thought we needed a new modem. And I just it's ready for me I to go pick up. I just haven't had time. I've been in contact with Nexcom for the last week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I hope that my little internet issue has given everyone time to catch up. It did. Excellent. Almost. Excellent. Except I just got it all thing. I lost internet too, Jill, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Bing, she hit a power button. Bing was happy. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't want a t-shirt, does she? So I want you to show Linda that beautiful t-shirt that you've got. It wasn't me that said it, Kim. Okay. What did, what did Aunt Linda say? And Aunt Linda didn't say anything. Oh. Well, she might have started then. I might have. Hi, baby. Here we go. Yeah, I was just there. Sean, are you there? Because... Yep, I'm here. Can you make um, Linda's screen the big one again? Perfect. Thank you. It looks clearer than mine, I think. So we'll just keep. Oh, that's a lot clearer, but yeah. it's the light. <laughs> we'll just keep. Uh... Thank you, Sean. We'll just keep going around. Sean said by the time you got here, yeah. everybody's earrings would be huge. Right? Exactly. Thankfully, you don't live that far away. Mm -hmm. I was driving by, I'm like, Kelly would have been closer, but. You could have came here. I'm here by myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bing was happy he can watch TV with volume now. What was on there somehow? Maybe. Maybe. What happened to your earrings? They're right there. I, bet I, I know how to do this part. I want to see how she puts the other stuff. In. Oh, okay. And, and it's more important that she has. Uh, I want a donut. Even uh, Kevin went to see his mom and didn't even come home to see me on our anniversary. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. That's rude. Well, I mean, she signed up for a workshop on their anniversary, so. There you go. That's what I was going to say, isn't it? Your anniversary today? Yes. I had to work late till seven. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, he went to see his mom. Besides, she was excited because and she must have a card for us. So that would be a, her first gift to us. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry, Jill. I can't finish. You can't finish your <laughs> ice, buddy. Or are you? Oh, you gotta eat your donut. Should go take grandpa down something. Uh huh. Um. Is there a plain the, cooler? The there? one that grandma has right now. Uh, or the honey glaze right there by your thumb. Mm -hmm. like, no intended to. Nice. Mm -hmm. it's like, you like Boston green. That's why grandma took it first. Me too. Yeah, you like plain. I was kind of pissy. Plain old fashioned mm -hmm. plain donuts. We know that. Those are mine too. <laughs> okay. Well, right. No choice. You guys are all recorded and going to be on YouTube later. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
I my thread is very tangly tonight. I don't know what's going on. But that's what happens with feeding. Is when you really want it to work out, it doesn't seem to want to. Thanks, Amanda. Do you guys did get a mix of colors. And that's how they work. I didn't know. <coughs> I'm just really it. anxious to learn how to do this. How do you like it? I like this. Yeah. I don't like plain deal. The one needle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This works up a lot faster. Yes. And a lot neater for me. Yes. Somebody has some TVs going off, I think. <laughs> A really short thing, you know. Oh. 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 I like long thread looming. I'm just having a conversation with Aunt Linda here about the different lengths of needles. She commented that I'm using some shorter ones compared to her six foot ones. Longer ones, quite a difference in length. I like the long ones for loom work, um, but I like the short ones for this type of work. It's when they have a lot more control. They're not as flimsy. The long ones bend. Yes. They get very warped. I mean, mom and dad and Christina, but they've seen it all through. I have to bring somebody over to see her friend. Yes. Because we can't steal her now. It was so funny the night he ran off with her. He's like, <laughs> start the car. <laughs> but he doesn't know that she hates being put in her car. Oh. And he took her out. <laughs> So that does lay down nice and flat. It does. What a difference. Very nice. It's nice to be here and see how everyone's is going. To keep it at a reasonable. Thanks, Dan Linda. Now that you're done your donut. No, I'm not done my donut, but oh. I'm gonna go give him his and help. Oh, okay. So Becky, what part are you needing wanting to learn? The edging? Yep. I think I like two needling better. Yeah. It, 
If anyone else on here has done one needle beading, um, I'd be curious to know how you feel about mm. two needle. <laughs> if you can keep your thread straight. And that's, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah. Keeping the thread straight. I use my mask. I don't like using my shirt. I had to change my shirt before um, I started because I was wearing a wool sweater. Yeah. And it just wouldn't hold it. Well, so I did this one and I went yeah. right through and I stitched yeah. my shirt. So then you'd go right yeah. through to your bra. Right. Yes. And then I was doing my hoodies. Yes. They were a little thicker. Yes. Tips the men can't use is to go through <laughs> to your bra. Well, maybe they can, I don't know. No, you I'm not going to judge. Oh, everyone's probably waiting for me now. Yours is a lot bigger. It's true. And yeah. I had that delay. See, mine was bigger too. So everybody was, oh, I'm done. I'm like, I'm only halfway. <laughs> yeah, I had um, only so many of the that same size that most everybody got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I just had the right number. I was so happy. And then I found out that there was a couple people short, but make it work. You could have called and had a couple. My beads are packed. <laughs> It'll be like Christmas when I open up my box of beads and remember all the beautiful colors I had. This it you looks just, no like exactly. <laughs> you just move. You couldn't. I was just gonna say <laughs> the only difference is for boxes you're supposed to. Be <laughs> I'm just playing that. I walked down. To, I haven't been to my basement since we moved. Okay. So I and and a lot of things were just like put that in the basement for now. Put that in the basement for now. So I walked down there today for the first time, yeah. and I'm like, oh my god. There's so much sorting and packing and unpacking, I mean. And I really wanted to um, purge before we moved. And then you just run out of time, right? You think you have tons of time and then mm -hmm. you don't. And 14 years later. Yeah. You still have boxes in the bed. Yeah. So I'm just, I have one, uh, I have just one little bead left that I have to put on. And then I'll tack those ones down. That your second earring? No, it's not my second earring. <laughs> Just my first. Actually, don't have another green of this gem in this size, so I won't. I don't think I'll be making an earring. I'll probably make a maybe a ring. <laughs> so here I am. I just have to tack my last couple beads down. And then I'll be caught up with everybody. <laughs> Did everyone get banding? Did you get banding? Yeah. This stuff? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the next step is to put the banding on. We're only going to do um, the three rows just so that we can get through it tonight. So the next step is to put the banding on. And it's okay if your banding is much longer than um, your earring right now. We can trim it when we get to the end and we don't really want to trim it too too close or too short. So it's okay to wait. So I always just um, start at the beginning and you can see which needle are we using? Oh, it doesn't matter. Either one? Either needle. Um, you can see that there's little threads in between each rhinestone. Um, and so I just come up between the rhinestones and tack down the threads. And I tack down each thread between each rhinestone. I don't skip any on this step. 
What's that? You have to tuck them down. Yeah, because they'll they'll, they'll bulge. Buckle. Yeah. Is that each side or do you, do you go? Um, I will just do the one side. And then when we're doing the edging of the earring, I will catch and yeah, tack down the other side. So. No, I'm okay, thanks. Yes, please. I don't know how well you can see. It's a bit light on the backing. I think it's just because it's white on white. No, oh, that's worse. Yeah. It's okay. Hi, Jill. Hi. Um, did you say for the rhinestones, you're just tacking down one side and then when you do the um, edging, you're you're waiting to tack the other side? Exactly. When I do the edging, it'll catch the other side. Okay, so just the inner part. Just the inner, exactly. Just the inner. Okay, thank you. Jeez, my thread. I bought this giant spool from John Bede. 20, um, how am I? 42, 24 years ago. And I'm probably only halfway done it. But it's old, like old, old thread. I think it'll start disintegrating soon. Spools like this? Yeah. Like the, the white one. Right? Yeah. You better come to Wigwash and get new thread. I better. I stole it from my mother. Yep. Yes, you did. And it's amazing the amount of things that I've made with that spool. And it like it's never ending. If you want it, oh, you're not finishing. All right, it's good. No, it's good. And my banding wants to rise up on me. It doesn't want to be laying flat tonight. <sighs> and my thread is still. My thread has a mind of its own tonight. Mm -hmm. Mine too. So just do the best you can with the banding. Try to get it close to the outer row of beads. Oh, I'm gonna... See, when you're frustrated, it starts acting up. As soon as you're talking to that. But... I know. Putting it down, I'm insulting my thread and it's acting up on me. I honestly believe that the energy we put into it like shows. Mm -hmm. That's why I say if you're in a bad mood or if you're tired or frustrated or angry or swearing, it's not going to work out. I know my mom talks about um, bead workers she knows in the Yukon who do some amazing work and they um, will assess bead work not by how it looks but by how it feels. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. It's nice and flat. And 
they do a beautiful, beautiful florals. Do you guys have wax here? I don't think I bring mine with me. I think I just need to re-wax it. Thank you, Laura. Just gonna re-thread my wax. So it keeps fraying or re-thread, re-wax my thread. <laughs> Rethread your wax? Yeah, rethread my wax. No, rewax my thread. It's just fraying and acting up. Hopefully that makes a difference. You did. I know. You weren't using it. I was beating. So you guys mm -hmm. shouldn't be taking as long as me because you have a um, smaller, except for Becky, apparently. <laughs> smaller area to go around. That was the only small size I had. Yeah. That was my smallest. Okay. And I knew Becky could handle it. Oh, she can. Absolutely. She's doing a great job. And I know you didn't have any laughs, so. No, I could have done a size or two bigger from what I had for the rest of the kits, but. Yep. As long as I can see it, I can practice. Mm -hmm. That one in there at the time. It doesn't really matter. They'll they'll intersect. You know that, right? Yeah, but it's confusing. Yeah. I'm easily confused tonight. <laughs> So another way um, that some people assess your beadwork is um, looking at the back of it and seeing how no stitches. how stitches how your stitches look at the back. They're all even. They're kind of in a row rather than all over the place. Yeah. Um, I tend to just run all over the place, so mine aren't always lined up the way they probably should be. Mine neither. That's why I covered them with a piece of fabric. Exactly. Gets her grandpa to watch all the Jimmy movies. Oh, all the Kevin Hart movies. Because he thinks they're funny. It's a bit of drama. Cute. So if you have funky centers yeah this would be a perfect one to do because you can get more intricate right what do you mean by funky centers funky shapes. like a scroll or oh yeah because then you can tack down whatever you need to yes yes 
And you can really use any shape or not use a center if you don't want to, or some people I've seen combine, like maybe a heart with a teardrop or, um, and then they're just a nice guide, I think, to start, give your, your whatever piece you're working on a nice shape. And you don't have to do the rhinestone either at the edge, but I like it. I think it gives it a nice finished look for earrings or hair ties or yeah, a brooch. I even threw a line of um, rhinestones on the cuffs I'm making for Scott. You wanted an example of um, one line beading versus two line beading, Jill? Yeah. Yeah. This week, they, I did a medallion with Sue Literacy, and this was my one line beading. And it's not very straight, but I like yeah. this better. And that's your two, and two line tonight? Two line tonight. Very nice. So you can see the difference, you can eh? can see the difference big time. Yeah. I find it really helps keep nice, straight, even flat lines. I might have to pull my medallion apart now and <laughs> two line it. When I first, I first heard about two line or two needle beading years ago um i forget like probably 15 years ago and somebody was describing it and i'm not um i can't learn that way and i was like what are you talking about like two needles like you must be crazy <laughs> and then i came across it a few years later down the road and i remembered um like hearing about it but actually seeing it made all the difference. And it, I, I really wish that I had paid attention or asked for a demonstration all of those years ago because it would have made um, beating a lot faster and a lot easier in the interim. So I got my thread hooked on my corner and didn't notice. So now I have this giant loop in the back and uh, if that happens to you, you can um, you can connect it and like tie it off or um, cut it in half and tie a knot. Or I'll figure out something, some way to secure that. But you don't want to leave it like that because um, your beads on the other side could come come loose. really you, whatever mistakes or errors you make you can fix they're usually fixable so all i did was catch it um, from my last stitch and bring it across to pull it tight So I'm almost to the end. They're not all tacked down yet, but um, I, I'm guessing that this one is about where I need to be to connect. Um, you don't want to be too short that you have a gap, but again, you don't want to be too long. Um, and if luck's on your side, it'll be the right, right spacing. But I have a few, I've done a few where it just didn't line up and I had, um, a couple gaps. You can just cut the banding when you're at the end. And then um, you 
because you it doesn't connect here i always take a little dab of uh white glue or gorilla glue and um go underneath each each end of the banding but i do that at the end like when the earring's done I don't know if you can uh, see this. Wait, my camera keeps turning off and on, off and on. Uh, come on, camera. There we go. So with my missing and murdered, oh, let me try to get it turned here pin that I made right here. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, wait, where the gap is? Yeah, yeah. Because another rhinestone couldn't go in there and it was right. just too short. What should right. I have done? I would have done that. I would have just yeah. left it like that. Left it like that? Yeah, because like they don't always line up, right? Yeah. It doesn't always work out perfectly. So I'd rather, for me personally, I'd rather leave that little bit of gap that you'd really have to be up close and, and look for than yeah. your fault. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I had to make 300 of these kits for school. Was that all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll be glad when I can retire. <laughs> My family. She just put a bead on the back. Well, no, it's mine. Yep. <laughs> you can take it off. Can't you take it out? No, no, My sweetheart. <laughs> so. The, Show me that baby. The baby? She's not here. <laughs> She's at home with her father. Oh. She was here earlier, Kim. I had a big, long visit and cuddle with her. Ugh. So, where I'm at the end, I, I would expect a lot, most everyone else is too, where we have our banding on. And at this point, what I usually do is tie off the back, but I don't cut my strings just yet. So um, I take my two threads and you can tie them however you want, but I tie mine together. So. <coughs> okay. It's on YouTube later. Yeah. Yeah. I know where it is. Exactly. So just tie a few. Good distance, long distance. A few uh, knots just to make it secure. In different people do different ways and I don't think there's a right or wrong whatever works for you I'm going to take my shortest there's quite a difference I obviously didn't switch up my threads but you can see quite a difference in the lengths of them between the packing one and the, the bead one I'm going to keep my shortest thread and I'm going to keep it attached and I'm going to cut off my longest thread so we're going to finish the earring. So I still have one thread attached. And then with the thread attached and very carefully, I'm going to cut around the edge of my earring, um, not tight to the rhinestone, but not too, too far away. Kind of eyeball it a little bit. It's about a half a bead width or a bead width away from 
from the edge of their rhinestones. And there they go. And we're going to do an edging on the earring that I learned again from YouTube. And the woman who was showing it said that it was called a Pico. I think it was Pico. I watched it years ago and my memory is bad. So it could be <laughs> something else. But as far as I remember, it's called a Pico stitch. I know. I think it's a family trait. No. Good memory. Just short. What? Exactly. <laughs> Three. So I'm just, I'm very particular about making my circle as even as possible. So I'm just catching little, those little tiny things from where your scissors leave a little sharp point. But anyway. It looks about like that. Um, did your kids have fabric? Yeah. Okay. So I don't have fabric. Thank you, Aunt Linda. And I happen to have a little bit here. <laughs> do we have a pen? In that bucket over there. Okay. I don't know if everyone has a pen available. I'm just going to put it in there. But what I don't know if you can see this on, but I put my earring on the fabric and I'm going to trace around the fabric. So your fabric backing will be the exact same size as your earring. And that's the fabric backing is to hide the ugly knots and everything in the back of our earring. Oh my here. Do you need the pen? No, I'm nowhere near there. Oh okay. So cut out your fabric. If you cut it a little bit too big or it's not quite perfect, it gets hidden by the beads. You don't want it overly too big, but a couple mistakes here and there aren't going to show. So there's my back, my fabric. Thank you, Linda. So we're going to take our fabric and take our earring and hold them together. And again, we still have one thread coming out from behind. And take our needle. And I always start with three beads. We're going to do an edging that'll have a bead here and then one in between and then another flat one. And we're going to do that all the way around. And um, at some point we'll put in the loop for the earring hook. So I start with three. Um, some people start with one, I've seen that, but I find three easiest. Get my third bead. All right, we have three beads on. We take it right to the end. And again, I'm going um, this way around, but if you're right-handed, you can go the other way around, whatever works for you. And then I take my thread, I come to the back, one bead width away. I don't know if you can see, but I don't know what's the easiest way to show. One bead width away from where the first bead is, and you come all the way to the front. And if you can, this is where you catch the rhinestone, the other edge of the rhinestone. And sometimes it doesn't line up, um, but for the most part it should. So um, yeah, and then we bring 
our thread around to the back. Sorry, I should pay attention to where I'm showing you. And we catch underneath this third bead and we come up just through that third bead and we pull it tight. So you should have this cute little triangle. Like that. Yep. That. So again, again, some puzzled faces. So maybe if you could show us a couple more times. Sure. So the next, the next time we do this, we go, we get two beads. So you start with three and then you do two. So again, I bring my needle to the back, from the back to the front. So I'm coming in at the back to the front and I bring it around. So it looks really wonky right now, but I pick up the very bottom from underneath, underneath the last bead and I come up and I pull it tight. So you end up with this. Two little beads. Two little, yep, just like that. A little triangle looking thing. So it should be, um, these beads should be flat all the way around and then you get this little one popping up. And there's lots of patterns you can do with this, um, you can do um, five beads. So you'd have one higher and then, or you can do um, just the one bead all the way around without this. But for now, we'll just, we'll just do it this way. So again, we pick up two more beads. And bring it from the back. You look like you're struggling, Laura. Mm -hmm. To the front, so I'm at the back, to the front. And if you catch the, see right now I'm catching my rhinestone right there. Um, so that's where I tack it down. If you don't catch it, it's okay. Um, so then again, I grab from underneath this bead and just come up. And you do that all the way around. Now, um, I'll let you guys get um, comfortable doing that before I show the hook for the earring, for the earring hook or the loop. It's great. So Jill, when you started this, it's Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Um, you took the thread, the needle, and you put it through the fabric back first. Yep. Okay. And I have then... always done it back, like from the back to the front. Yeah. I would, okay. I think you could do front to back. I always learn front to back. Yeah. It's weird with doing back to front. Yeah. Like. Honestly, I don't think there's a right or wrong way as long as you get the finished result you're looking for. Okay. Yeah. So if you're more comfortable working front to back, Becky just said that's how she learned. So. I mean, first comment I said, just tie Yeah. Yeah. Not that it, and I'm still doing back to front, but it's just different. I don't know if it's because I'm left handed. Are you too easy? Someone really powerful. Jill, it's Amy. Hi, Amy. So I was struggling to rethread my needle when you started. So I'm at the very beginning point of that first stitch with the three okay. beads. So did you pick up three beads? Yes. Okay. And then you bring your, it, it's the same. So you would bring um, your needle up through, from like up through the last bead. 
and then you, it, you make sure the thread is coming up out of the earring. So am I, I'm just not clear what I'm doing with the beads. Do I can, want to loop them over we, that edge? Is that what they're you, doing? Can you put on video? Yeah. Okay. So I brought my thread up through the front, right from the back. Mm -hmm. And then I put on my yep. three beads. Yeah. Um, but now I don't know what to do. So take, I'm pointing at your, your where you are. Take yeah. your needle to yep. um, right beside the very first bead. Okay. And come over just a little bit. So you're about, about half a bead width or a bead width away. Okay. And bring your needle from the back through to the front. Or the front through to the back, whatever is easier for you. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. So these and the beads are wrapping around the edge, right? Yes. Okay. And then bring your needle up to the last bead that you put in from the uh, bottom up. Yes, sir. Okay. Did you get a little triangle? Yes. Okay. Then you do two. And then I do two. And then we alternate from two to three? No, you do two the rest of the way around. Just two. Okay. Just two. Until the end. Okay. And, and when we make a loop, we do more than two. But for now, just do two. Okay, perfect. All right, thanks. Her beads are smaller than yours. She's doing the. They could looks be. Looks like she's doing it right, but it looks different than yours. It could be. Mine are very um, round. No, she's doing it right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mine are big. These are big beads. And hers do look more square. So she's got like a longer, um, along the top. It looks like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my beads are all different sizes. Yeah, yeah. If you can get like some really nice, evenly sized beads that are beautiful to work with, and then some really not. Yes. Football's on at eight. <laughs> Rory Cummings said, thank you, Jill. He's having some uh, trouble okay. with his internet. Um, okay. So he's just going to watch the uh, YouTube recording when he can. Okay. Rory knows how to get a hold of me, too, if he has any questions. So Excellent. Thanks. Can you get Grandma to come help you? He, he, he wasn't waiting. All I need is milk to help change it. What channel to change it back to? I'll try to back. <laughs> So I'm going to throw in a random earring loop as soon as I get through this one. So for the earring, for the loop, for the earring hook, I just pick up uh, six beads. Nope, I'm not actually leaving it in because I'm not making an earring. But you put on six beads. 
And then you do the exact same thing. You bring it down through the next, like right beside it, as if you were, as if it was a normal two, two beads. And then you bring your needle up through the one at the, at the very bottom. And voila, you have your little, your little extra little height for your, and then you can connect your earring. You should, um, you should be able to pry them apart and connect them through. Yeah. 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 And then I would take my um, fishing, um, I don't know what they're called, pliers, and uh, loosen them and then tighten them. <laughs> so, however it works for you guys, little set of pliers for, for the... But I'm gonna take that out. I, I'm not making earrings. This is the only green stone I have. So I'm going to make a ring, I think. Caitlin. <laughs> Unless you're gonna sing for us. No. <laughs> I hear you're very good. My grade sixes think so. Get you what? That's what Mike is on. He's asking me if you're gonna do it in raw. Nope. So once I do the Earring hook. Yep. Loop. Do I do the three again or the back to the back three? to two? Always two. And sometimes I'm very particular, and I'll put my try to put my hoop in a very specific spot, like where the the red would be, at what I would guess would be like the top of the earring, rather than just in a random spot. But again, there's no right or wrong way to do it just make sure both the rings are the same yeah exactly you you want to whatever wherever you put the hoop in the one you want to put it on the other you done kim had a girl and then you repeat for the second earring this is my third pair of mitts since sunday i really got to get my ankle better my heel well, doing all those um, sewing would keep you off your feet, wouldn't it? I yeah, no. I'm making too many mitts. Oh, I got to get my house done. I am not even ready for Christmas. Thirty-six days, Kim. You have thirty-six days. Yeah. Everybody's got their lights up and it always it looks so pretty out there and I haven't even begun. And if I don't do it, Kate gets mad at me. Kate gets mad at you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, last year I said I wasn't putting any bunch of Christmas decorations up and she had a fit. Oh, you have to. I have to go by your house and blah, blah, blah. Right, Kate? Yep, I've been doing the same thing to my grandma. I don't this have year. my lights up yet, Kim. You have an excuse. I'm putting them up tomorrow. Jill? Yes. I have to go, so thank you very much. You're welcome, Kelly. My husband got home so we can celebrate our anniversary now. Oh, happy anniversary Ooh. to oh, you. Make and sure Kevin. you make sure you mute the, your uh yeah, mute the turn, mic. turn off mic. your mute the mic. mic. We don't want to know. And turn off the video. <laughs> Watch out for snow in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Kelly. Hi, Kel. So when we get around to the very last, um, oh, I was gonna use one of your ladies, but you're not there yet. Come on, mister. They'll probably be there before me. The very last one that we use to connect to the beginning, we only put on one bead. Because you already have, you already have this bead. And you already have the one beside it. You should. And so you just want this bead that popped up. So that's why you just put on the one. 
and some so I said earlier, some people start with one bead and then um, continue around with two, and then they have to end with three. But um, when I when I saw the first YouTube tutorial with this stitching, with this edging, um, she did the the three, and that made more sense to me. And so these these skills, like doing this two needle beading, um, we just did a little set of earrings or one earring, but um, these are transferable. Um, this technique and uh, this edging are transferable to pretty much any beading that you would want to do, whether you're making moccasins or um, hair ties. It's really Interior. Yeah, any regalia. Yes. Yep. Breech cloths. Mm -hmm. 20 years. I like I like lazy stitch for like big like big fill, like areas that I have to do really fast fill in. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I'm such a perfectionist that I love the look of two needle flat beading. Not that they were missing, but I remember that they were all the materials that we use as tablecloths for a wedding. And I want to use them to make a What is the? Uh, maybe a black hat. Mm -hmm. Just dropped my thread and needle and lost my beads. That's rough. Yes. Oh, I like that. Is that what similar to what we you taught us for that I made a duvet cover for? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was the. Uh, I like that one. Great. So I'm getting to the end. Okay, Laura's racing me to the end. Yours is bigger. <laughs> I don't even know where you are. I can't see. Oh. I think I have about six, maybe. Little one. Just gotta take the big one first, right? Oh, I'm gonna take the big one first. What can I teach the last quick class? I'll show you a picture later. I think Ross Wilson is gonna be MVP this year. Is that the pyramid one? No. No, I think it was that. Um, Lad, I don't know. I don't know the names for them. Being in. 
the one you spent 1800 hours in. So I'm getting close. So you want, I want to eyeball. See, I have one here and one here, and I can just fit one more right there. So I'm almost to the end. That one that looks like a sunset. No. Okay. So I have, I don't have any more room between. Um, my very last one and my very first one. Um, I don't have enough for these flat beads. So I'm going to end with one, just one bead. I have my one bead. And then for this one, I come down, down through the very first bead and I come to the front. So again, it just looks like a seamless um, edge where you shouldn't be able to tell where you started and where you finished. And then I just bring it to the back and I tie it off, I'm all done. So you guys should, it should be nice and flat on the back fabric and then you should have a finished a finished earring yeah so hopefully everyone was able to uh follow along and finish finish <laughs> <laughs> or not i know not everyone has and that's okay um but that's how you would make an <laughs> earring with a, a nice finished edge and uh with two needles Awesome. Well, thanks so much, uh, Jill, for joining us and, and te teaching us. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Um, Sean, we, I'm just going to yeah. put the email in the chat. And then if anyone has questions, they can reach out and let me know. Is that OK? Yeah, absolutely. What I was going to say is we could uh, add your email onto. Uh, we're going to do a little follow-up email out to everyone. Okay. Uh, maybe with a survey to see how everything went um, and uh, we're going to send that out but we want to see pictures of your beating when it's done and if you could send that over to us on our Facebook page or send Kim or Casey or myself uh, you know an email or a message uh, that'd be great we want to share it with with everyone to show all the cool stuff we're doing um, uh, but yeah, thanks so much, everyone. Did you have anything to add, Kim? Yeah, Sean, do you think that uh, when you send out that the email follow up, you could include um, the Facebook, not the Facebook, the YouTube, so that people can watch it again if they need to? Yeah, absolutely. That'll all be there. Yeah, okay, that's perfect. Anybody have any questions? Uh, Penny, oh, love to Rebecca. Thank you. <laughs> pretty, pretty thank you, Jill. For, thank you, Jill, for showing us. Uh, I've been beading for almost 40 years, and this is the first time I've done flat beadwork that was flat. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you like it? I like it. I'll never do the one needle beadwork again. That's how I feel about it too. Yeah, I don't I'll go back. Thanks. Yeah. Do not double your thread. No. No, I never double my thread because sometimes the holes through the beads are too small and it, it won't go through. Oh, that's pretty. That orange orange edge one. That's very nice. Yeah. Oh, no. I think it's frozen now. Thank you, Jill. It's Diane. Oh, you're welcome, Diane. Very nice. We want to say thank you too from Jesse and I for letting us participate. I've learned a new skill. I'm not good at it, but I did learn it. So thank, you. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for joining. All right. Have a great night, everyone.
Thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.